What's going on guys? Stefan with you, s and Garage. Behind us, we have our 2016 GSF up on jack stands. We have some wheel issues. We're gonna show you what we're dealing with. All right guys, so first and foremost, anytime you're working on your car, obviously you need to use a jack. Always put it on some jack stands. The jack stands are gonna keep you safe. They're gonna keep the car safe. Um, just make sure you set them up correctly. Uh, so what we have here are some jack stand, they're basically protectors here for the pinch weld. I got these on Amazon, I'll link them in the video description below. They sit right in the cradle of the jack stand and they hug the pinch weld just to prevent it from being damaged because whoever had this car before me didn't do a very good job at protecting it. You can see here they kind of kinked up the torque box a little bit, not a big deal. Uh, but we're going to do better. So we went ahead and set those up. Fortunately for me, I know people in the business. Um, so I had to replace this tire. We caught a nail right in the side here. Um, and from this tread sipe over and from the inside tread sipe over, you're not supposed to repair because that's kind of where the, uh, the metal um, belt, the radial belt ends and the plug won't hold, the patch won't hold and the tire needed to be replaced. So that was no problem. We replaced the tire. But when we put it on the balancer, the wheel had a noticeable wobble to it, and it took a ton of weight to balance. You'll see here that I had to double stack the weights um, on the outside of the rim. And then if you can see it, or if I can get you to it, there is also a very large amount of weight here on the inside. So this should not take anywhere near this. This is close to five ounces. Now what I want you to notice is how this wheel, you might not be able to see it on the video, but it's got a very noticeable wobble to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this wheel off and we're gonna bring it to get repaired. We're gonna see how they do. I've never done this before. I've never had a bent wheel straightened, but then again, I'm a good driver. I've never bent a wheel on a car. I have a feeling that this uh, was bent when I purchased it. There's no way for me to confirm or deny that, but I can tell you that it wanted weights exactly where we took the old weights off. So that tells me that this wheel was probably balanced, um, bent previously. Um, now the only thing that sucks is I don't have a spare tire for this car. So while this rim is getting repaired, the car's going to sit on jack stands and I'm not going to be able to use it. Um, now, I do want to put wheels on this car. I do want to go with a little bit more of an aggressive offset to get a little more poke out of the fenders. But uh, we're not at that stage yet, so we're going to have to bite the bullet here and get this wheel fixed. So while we await the fate here of our Lexus GSF rim, um, the guys over at X-Tool have been partnering with us for a while. Uh, they hooked us up with the D8 um, and our other little handheld scanner. Um, they went ahead and sent us something new that they wanted us to try out. Uh, so what we have here, it's a little OBD dongle. This is the AD20 Advanced. Uh, so let's open it up, let's check it out. Let's connect it here to our disabled Lexus and uh, look at some of the things that it can do. All right guys, so here is our AD20 Advanced. We are going to go ahead and break the seal here and open it up. So what you're gonna have here is your owner's manual. What you're gonna do, you're gonna take your smartphone, you're going to scan this barcode and you are going to download the app. The app looks something like this. And what you can do, you can do code scanning, you can do an in-depth check, it'll tell you if the engine light is on, live data, um, and you can actually also use this as a heads-up display. There's a couple of different things that we can do here. So let's go ahead, let's go over to the car, take this out of the box here just to show you what it looks like. It's a little dongle, it looks very similar to something you'd get from your insurance company. Um, or something of the sort. It's not really going to take up a whole lot of room. Uh, so let's go over to the Lexus, plug this in, and uh, we'll show you what we can do. All right, so we just plugged it in here to our Lexus. We went ahead and turned the key on. So we're going to go ahead and pair this. Uh, the first thing we need to do is scan the QR code that is on the AD20. So we're going to go ahead and scan that, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, once you scan it, you are just going to confirm and we are going to start pairing. So next you're gonna see your VIN number, your year. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and type Lexus in here. 
Okay, and then we're going to go to series, G, S, F, and pair. Again, model year 2016. So now that we're connected, it's going to go ahead and do a quick test. Let's let it do its thing. And we'll see what it tells us. It's going to tell us our battery voltage. It's going to tell us our coolant temperature, engine load, how many revs. Right now the engine's not on, so it's obviously going to tell me zero RPM. But it's going to go through and, you know, it's going to let us know how everything's doing. Go ahead and do an in-depth check and see what it comes up with. It's going to go ahead and check everything. It's going to check our engine. It's going to check the powertrain, transmission, differentials, things like that. It's going to do steering and brakes, you know, steering angle sensors, uh, wheel speed sensors, uh, electric parking brake, you name it. It's going to check all the, you know, radar cruise, tire pressure monitor, airbags, things like that. And it's going to check everything else. We'll see what kind of codes we come up with. We did just have to replace all of our tire pressure monitoring uh, sensors. Uh, so there is a very good chance that we may have a TPMS code in here, the you know history, that we can look at. No faults found. So that's awesome. So now we can go ahead, we can go back here with the back arrow, and let's look at some other features. Okay, so you can go into live data. Like I said, it's going to tell us, you know, whatever you want. You know, there's a whole list of uh, PIDs that you can find here. So let's look at absolute throttle position. Let's see where that's at. 50.6, it's probably saying that because the engine is not running right now. Let's go ahead and look for some other features here. So here if we go into Application Center, you can go to Smart Dash, and you can actually use this as a heads-up display. So you would put it on your dashboard facing up, and you'll see the reflection um, in your windshield, which is actually it's pretty cool if you think about it. Let's see what else we have in here. We can do a performance test. We can do trip management. You know, we can do battery check, MIL status, component test, mode 6. Not really sure what that is. Mode 6 allows access to the results for onboard diagnostic monitoring through these systems. Confirm. So let's see what it says here. So it looks like what mode 6 does here is it, it charts all of your, your sensor data here. So we have minimum value and maximum. So it's just kind of showing you how your sensors are performing, which is pretty neat. So we saw mode 6. We have smog check, live data. I showed you that. In-depth check, we did that. Trouble code scanning, it's basically an in-depth check. Uh, but let's go ahead and trouble code scanning. Check now. And then, like I said, it's basically going to do an in-depth check. So everything checks out. No codes, which is awesome. No OBD faults found in the car. Beautiful. I am going to be leaving a link in the video description below. If you want to pick up one of these AD20s, whether you want the advanced or the not so advanced, uh, just buy from the link below. There will be a coupon code down there. Use that coupon code. Save yourself a couple bucks. Support us here at the channel and support the guys over at Xtool because they're doing some great things. All right, guys, so uh, hopefully when we return, we will have a nice straight wheel to install back on our GSF. Uh, but stay tuned. It'll be two seconds for you. We'll see how we made out. All right, guys, so we got some bad news here with our rim for this GSF. Uh, this rim is actually not repairable, um, and a new rim is $1,600 because these are BBS wheels. They are forged. Um, and they're supposed to be really strong wheels, but apparently this one wasn't. I'm not exactly sure what happened here, but whoever had this car before me hit something in this area here, and they actually bent the spokes of the rim inwards, and you cannot by any means straighten the spokes. So I'm gonna use my flashlight here, and I want you to focus in on this area. You can actually see that there are some stress cracks there in the paint. So this is the area where my bend is, and that is the area where this wheel took the most weights, and you can also see it is where um, they tried to grind it down to get rid of the damage uh, done to the face of the wheel. 
So this is a $1,600 oops, because uh, I missed this. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I can get the dealer to buy me a new rim, seeing as this is obviously not something that we did. Uh, the car came like this. And we're gonna see what they have to say, but if not, we're probably gonna buy a set of new, you know, rims and tires for this car, make it, you know, update it a little bit and make it look nice and fresh. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Comment down below. Let me know what you think I should do. If you think I should get new wheels and tires or if I should just buy one, uh, maybe try to find a used one and we'll take it from there. But uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us. This is gonna be a fun build and uh, we're excited to see where it takes us. So we'll see you next time.